Thank you for joining us for this Fox 5 special presentation, Beyond the Lens, Stories from the Streets. You rarely see them from behind the camera, but there would be no Fox 5 without our incredible team of photojournalists. From storms to celebrations, stories of survival, and even death on the front lines, it takes a great deal of skill, even sacrifice, to pull off their jobs. These are their stories in their own words. We've got to be ready. I love this job. That one shot in a story that can kind of speak for the whole story. These are real people. And you, you can't forget that. Those moments, that's what, that's what I live for. I love that. I like to shoot wide, medium, and tight. To give you a perspective of the scene that I'm in front of. And then middle shots to transition to actually what is going on in this scene. Constrict it down one more time to the tightest shot of just the chest piece moving. I think that it has a real dramatic effect also. Creativity, uh, you can't control the elements, but what you can control is the way it looks. Our job is to use the video side and then we work with the reporter who writes it. Now, the interesting thing is it becomes like a dance. It, I don't know what they're going to write. They don't know exactly what I'm shooting. And I have to tell you, it is quite dangerous. We meet in the middle, and it just works. If you're looking at a football game, you're, you're in the stadium, and you see all the action that's going on around you, and you can kind of focus in on the player. And that's what we kind of do with the camera. We're we'll focusing in on that one player that we're following. That's what our goal is, is to find that that one shot in a story that can kind of speak for the whole story. I'm Chip Aisden, and I've been a photojournalist for 14 years. From the minute that I get in to the minute that I get out, I am on task trying to get that story on air, and my day flies by okay. like that. Gonna lock in. One step forward. All right, that's perfect. Okay, All right, you're locked in. Ready, set. All right, let's go. All right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, right, right. Sometimes, left, left, right, right, straight, 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 straight. You can win straight, straight, without left. even being straight, able straight. to see the finish line. Good job. Good job. Yeah. All right. Recently did a story on a, a, a blind Special Olympian who's a, a track star. You know, the, the wheels immediately started to spin. Uh, how am I going to capture this? to tell the story from a blind man's perspective. Don't ever say you can't do it, people, because you can do it. You try to do it. Don't say, I can't do it. Say, I can do it. This is a guy who's just one of the most amazing people that I've ever been around. They are such a creative group. All right, I want you to think back to the summer months here in Washington, D.C., how oppressive that heat can be. Now imagine wearing a full military uniform and carrying 50 pounds of gear on your back. That's the feeling one Fox 5 photographer tried to convey in his story called In the Heat of Honor. My name is Lansing. I've been a photographer for almost 25 years. It was essentially a story that I was sent out to do on the Day of Remembrance where a lot of people would go out to Arlington Cemetery to pay their respects to uh, our fallen armed forces. Uh, throughout that day, I was hearing people like complaining about how hot the weather were, was and <clears throat> just how miserable they felt with the hot weather. I decided, you know what, our military is overseas, they're in Iraq, they're suffering way more than we are. And so I turned the story into how do we remember not only our fallen heroes, but remembering the people that are fighting over there in Iraq for us and just how hot it is for them. We have an excessive heat warning posted across much of the area this afternoon with record heat. Some of the hottest weather I've ever encountered. It's really hot out, it's way too humid. Sure, it's 100 degrees, but our presence here goes a long way. We're attributing a, a couple minutes of our time. They, they not only sacrificed their lives, but you know, they put their families on hold. They put, they, they were very selfless. It doesn't matter if it's heat or if it's cold, uh, we would do it. It's very important to remember not only D, but every soldier's laying in this graveyard. Uh, 
they've sacrificed and they've given all for our freedom uh, where we live out here in the United States. The weather is not really a factor when you're when you're coming to Arlington, but yeah, it, it's a hot one. Um, the day that he left, I said, "Do your best," and he did better than his best. He saved the guy's life. So, what more could a father ask of a son? My son, Lance Corporal James W. Higgins Jr., was shot and killed in Iraq just a week before coming home. I think about how hot it is outside, and then I think about how hot it is in Iraq or Afghanistan and how much gear they're wearing. If they can do it, so can I. I will do whatever it takes to keep his memory alive and the memory of everybody else that served their country. My name is Indira Levine, and I've been a photographer for 13 years. Monday, I get a phone call saying, hey, we want you to go in a plane with Tucker. He's skydiving. My first thought is, am I jumping out this plane with him? We're going to take you two and a half miles above the Earth. Okay. We're going to throw you out of an airplane. I have my huge camera strapped to the side, and the guy opens the door. And the plane is just going straight up in the air. It's that moment when you have no control. As photographers, we have control over how to fix things because we have to fix it. But in this situation, you're just scared. Ready to go? So far, so good. Tucker is like, Indira, I'm, I'm scared. I got in my mind. I'm shooting him. And it's just so much fun to think, this is something I've never done in 13 years. Wow, amazing stories. All right, coming up, putting their lives on the line. Large tornado right here in front of me, less than a mile. Look, I think it's moving our way. Oh my God, I never seen anything like this. One of our photographers walks us through the exciting and terrifying moments he went tornado chasing with Sue Palka nearly 20 years ago. Plus, reporting from the eye of the storm, how our crews went up against Mother Nature to cover Hurricane Irene. Welcome back. We've all seen pictures and video of the devastation Mother Nature can leave behind after a storm, but getting that video onto TV means a photojournalist was willing to put their life on the line. I'm Dave Rysak, and I've been a photographer for 34 years. By all accounts, June of 1995 was a very good month for tornado chasing. Sue Palka and I. Scientists are trying to learn an awful lot more about. Travel to uh, Oklahoma. Unbelievable. Is this for real? We spent three or four days chasing tornadoes with some of the experts in Norman. It's in this area here that uh, the tornado would be most likely to form. And we chased in Oklahoma and Texas, the Panhandle of Texas. Supercells also are likely. The day we got there, there was a tornado in the Panhandle. The next day, we were out there chasing again and you could see the remains of dead cows and trees blown over and, and semi-tractor trailers blown off I-40, the main highway. And remember stopping on this dirt road and looking up and seeing this massive supercell cloud. And I said, I'm just gonna roll on this for five minutes. And what I didn't realize as I was rolling on it, the whole thing was rotating. It's like something out of Close Encounters, like a spaceship just rotating above us. Oh my God, I never seen anything like this. I think it's moving our way. I have two babies at home. I don't want to die in Oklahoma. Large tornado right here in front of me, less than a mile. I ask myself that as I'm shooting a story or as I'm doing something, I'm like, am I going to die doing this? That is remarkable. Now. August of 2011, Hurricane Irene came barreling up the east coast of the United States as millions of people evacuated their homes to seek higher ground. Teams of news crews drove right towards the eye of the storm. My name is Steve Williams. I've been a photographer for 15 years. I'm Tucker Barnes live in Ocean City, Maryland, where the winds are certainly picking up. It was a hurricane I was doing with Tucker Barnes. We were in Ocean City, and we normally don't get too much going on. It's an amazing sight down here. I'm down on the boardwalk, and uh, best I could tell, I'm the only one out here. Look what's happening to our seawall. This foam just starts showing up. Like, <laughs> he's standing there on the boardwalk, and next thing you know, the boardwalk is being taken over by foam. It's like a nasty-looking, brownish, sea plankton-type foam. 
And uh, it just became the story, you know, this just sea foam. Tucker, is it, is it getting worse or are you kind of leveling off here? Uh, it's definitely getting worse out here. The winds continue to gust, Brian, and uh, I, I think we're, uh, we're well into the 50 mile per hour range, pretty steady here now. And the uh, sea foam continues to just kind of pour over the wall. Tucker's getting covered in it, you know, we're getting calls and we were up for it. We did shots for 23 hours because the whole country wanted live shots about this foam. Live for us from Ocean City. Be careful with that weird stuff, okay? It looks like a Nickelodeon show where it's Whoa, slime. whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, oh wow, man. look at that water coming up over the seawall. And so the hurricane was second to this. It was all foam. Tucker's getting covered in the foam, and we're doing hits, and they just want these waves, and they're popping up and dumping on them. And then also, it ended up being a top 10 on David Letterman. All right. My name's Ronnie McRae. Probably been shooting for eight years. Total, I've been in this business for 10. I would say the most exciting story I ever covered, um, I'm a big hurricane guy. I love covering hurricanes, it may be crazy and stuff, but I was actually down in Myrtle Beach during Hurricane Irene, where the actual eye came over top of the beach. Um, just out there covering that to see the sand blowing sideways, the wind, things going back and forth, and it was just chaotic. I actually have a, a battle scar from that as well too because <laughs> uh, the wind you just you can't control the wind and the hotel door just opening up you know that thing would just fly shut and uh my hand got caught in there so boom it just smashed that bad boy so i was shooting probably for the next two days with a big broken finger but i still loved every bit of it my name is austin reeves i've been a photographer for 20 years now I love the stories that allow me to go places and see things that most people in their daily lives would never experience. 20, 25, even 30 inches of snow. Snow is getting heavier and it's coming down kind of sideways. It continues to fall and it's going to fall all night long. Snowmageddon was kind of like bracing to go out for war against Mother Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Show up at the station, know you're in for the long day. You are looking now at a live picture of one of our photographers driving in uh, from Ashburn, Virginia. He's on the Dulles Toll Road right now. You know, break out the gear, gear up, get your cold weather gear on, you know, food, water, emergency stuff that I always have on hand, as, as you know. <laughs> and, and roll out and know that you're on your own, but yet you're trying to show people who we don't want out there, who we don't want experiencing it, and yet give them that experience and show them why they shouldn't be out there. Stay home, don't do what we do. <laughs> People always ask me what news life is like, what it's like to be a news photographer. And I tell them I've almost been blown up, crushed, stabbed, shot, eaten by a bear, fallen out of a car, crushed by heavy equipment. <laughs> I can go on. Um, <laughs> Hey, I'm Mike Horan. I've been at Channel 5 for 32 years and a photographer for 28. It really looks like a raging river from this uh, view. We could see it from the River sky. Road was a very strange story because it was just a water, I was told there was a water main break. I was actually an editor that day, so usually if there's a water main break and I'm inside the building, by the time I get to it, it's a trickle of water. It's going to be nothing special. A swift water rescue in the middle of a two-lane commuter route. It's something that we train for. I go out there and it turns out it's one of the largest water mains in the area. People are actually in danger of drowning on River Road. So they are headed to work that morning, no bodies of water in sight, and suddenly they're in a raging river and Montgomery County uh, Fire and Rescue came in with their river rescue unit to pull them out. It was remarkable, and it went on for hours. Freezing cold, if anyone went down in that water and got swept away, they would have died of hypothermia probably fairly quickly. Remember that day, it was amazing. Well, working in the news business, we witness a lot of history in the making. Coming up, a firsthand story of what it was like at Kennedy Space Center when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded following takeoff. Plus, one of the darkest days in America's history, 9-11.
Several Fox 5 photographers explain what it was like to be within feet of the Pentagon on that day when this Fox 5 special presentation continues. That's the good thing about being in this business um, and being in Washington, D.C. We've done inaugurations. We've done uh, disaster events. We've done uh, just everyday stories. Doing what I do sort of gives you a front seat to a lot of history-making events. And, uh, and I don't take that for granted. Witnessing history is something the photographers at Fox 5 do every day. From the day-to-day -day stories that give a glimpse into local communities to the events that children will later learn about in their classrooms. There are some stories that always stick with you. So I'm Nelson Jones and I've been a television news photographer for 34 years. Uh, yeah, I kind of remember like it was six months ago. It was that, that strong. We have main engine start, three, two, one, and liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. January 1986, I was in a live truck in downtown Tampa with a good friend of mine still to this day, and we were doing a basic Tampa City Hall story, and we had message pagers back then in 1986, believe it or not, and a page came over, the page said, go to Orlando now. So we didn't know what it was, and we called, and they said that the Space Shuttle Challenger had exploded. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. It just all went into a million pieces, it seemed to me, and then all these little white things started coming down. And I, I just knew it was wrong. I just knew something terrible had happened. It was a terrible tragedy. That was a pretty, pretty powerful week and pretty, uh, pretty memorable week. It was one of those times where, uh, you know, you'd shed a little tear behind the viewfinder, and we've all been there. Still ahead, looking back to September 11th, 2001. They're investigating the It was a Herculean effort by everybody to get the coverage out, and it was the day, I think, journalism in America stopped being petty and was real. Stories from the people who ran towards chaos to bring us one of the biggest breaking news stories the district has ever seen. Plus, one of the darkest sides of war, an emotional look at what happens to the belongings of soldiers who never came back from battle. take a look at everything and make sure that just kind of assess everything and see what kind of situation she's looking at as far as uh, um, casualties and whatnot. Many of the photographers here at Fox 5 have lived and worked in D.C. for years, even decades. When we asked them to recall the most memorable story they ever covered, a number spoke about being in the middle of the chaos at the Pentagon on 9-11. My name is Mike Rickard. I've been a photographer for 25 years. The 9-11 one was probably the worst because while we were covering it, we, we didn't have an idea what was coming next. And every time you heard a jet fighter or saw our sirens or the radio traffic of where they were maybe bombing next, but then they would send you to that location. Yes, we're told another aircraft is coming towards the Pentagon. We have another threat, ma'am. That's all I can say right now. Wayne, 10 miles outside of Washington. Uh, I, I don't know, ma'am. And literally, while everyone was evacuating the city, we were headed to the Pentagon, which was just heading and saw the medical personnel, the fire people, um, injured people, jets flying overhead, and it was very unnerving, and at the same time, just the biggest story probably we'll ever cover, and just saw the worst of the worst, but then the best of the best of people that responded. And police are telling me reports are that plane may be headed to the district, and they're speculating that it may actually be headed back here to the Pentagon. I was frightened for my own self, and I couldn't contact my family and my wife was two weeks away from, it turned out, having our child. And I'm thinking, I'm New York, you know, bombings. Um, and she only knew I was okay was because she saw the reporter I was with on the air and knew I was with her. So she knew I was okay, but I couldn't even reach them to tell them where I was or what I was doing. I would say on every big story like that, when things are happening so quick, 
you don't think about it till afterwards. I think you're so worried about what you're doing at that time, getting the pictures, the sound, you're almost immersed in your job. If you thought about it then, you would probably be like, whoa, you know, this, this is crazy. My name is Jason Smith. I've been a photographer since 1994. I was doing a live shot in Arlington and uh, we saw a plane and then we saw the second plane hit. My phone started ringing and uh, they said, hey, we need you to go National Airport, hop on a plane <laughs> and go to New York City. And my response to uh, the assignment desk person, did you see what just happened? You want me to what? And there you see uh, something I never thought as someone growing up in New York City I would ever see, uh, the collapse of the World Trade Center. So just go to the Assembly Union Station, but by then, uh, Flight 77 had, uh, had slammed into the Pentagon. And I actually was dispatched there by my wife. My wife sent me a really, called me very quickly, and she said, I think a bomb just went off the Pentagon. And I said, I don't even want to come home. She said, it's fine. What she didn't tell me was, she had discovered that day that she was pregnant. And she was a flight attendant with United Airlines. I would love to say that my first reaction when I was there was to go charging right up and take pictures and do all the things a journalist does. I was scared to death. I didn't want to go. I wanted to go home to my wife. Um, not because I was scared for me, but I was scared for her. I, I didn't know what was going on. And my instinct was I was frightened. I wanted to be with my wife. She said, hey, I, um, I just got a call. Uh, the crew desk is sending me out to Amsterdam on the first flight out. I was doing a live shot at Dulles and covering the first flights out. And sure enough, um, she came up to where the trucks were and we talked and I said, all right, I love you. I'll see you when you get back. She said, absolutely. And we parted. And seeing my wife's plane take off right after that, even though she's the, <laughs> she's the non-emotional one of the family. I'm the, I'm, I'm the one that wears my emotions on my sleeve. She was like, no, it'll be fine. It'll be great. And I was, I was a wreck inside. I was just, my stomach was in knots. And uh, she said, listen, this is the safest time ever to fly. You know what? She was right. And she flew and everything was great. But it was, uh, it was a real tough time for all of us. Um, and I don't know how people with small, small children did it at that time because we were working 12, 14, 16 hour days. It was nuts. Remarkable story. That was photojournalist Jason Smith. Several years after 9-11, Jason got a whole new perspective on the impact of the events that unfolded that day. He went behind closed doors to see what happens to the belongings of American soldiers who died in the line of duty. What could you tell about a person if you knew the songs they listened to and the notes they played, the words they read, and the lines they wrote. If you knew who made their heartbeat just a little faster, knew who is missing them now that they're gone. The most intimate personal items that you can imagine. And they go through and they catalog each one of the items. Even so much as writing down the serial number of each bill that the person had. Uh, okay, four photos, DVDs, books, notes from their kids, notes from their wives. Um, you know, things that, that it's not anybody else's business to see, yet these people volunteer <laughs> to go and do this. And we were, uh, I think we were the first uh, crew to be, to come in and tell this story. And uh, it was inspiring. I'm a, I'm a huge supporter of the, of the military and just being able to be entrusted, um, that they entrusted Beth and I to come in and tell that story meant a lot to us and it was a very reverent day. Uh, we took everything very seriously. Uh, it was a very quiet place. Uh, the people did their jobs. But it showed me a side of war that no one ever gets to see. And uh, it really humanizes everything that goes on. And uh, for me, that's what really, uh, that story just blew, blew us away. That can hit you pretty hard. We're going to shift gears in just a little bit. Coming up, ever wonder what President Barack Obama smells like? I know it's an odd question, but one of our photographers found out during a memorable encounter. She will share it with you next. Plus, the story behind this presidential selfie. 
Meanwhile, one thing you should know about our photographers, they're incredibly passionate people. Here's what they have to say about the job that they do every day. I love this job. I remember from then, like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I absolutely love doing. Like, I cup, I'm like, why am I getting teary? Anyone that knows me knows that my number one goal in the morning is to have fun. I don't care how hard the, the shoot is or technically involved. I always want to have fun. I always want to be around fun people. If I were a millionaire, I'd still want to shoot. I might take weekends off. I think I've found my place. I think I found my calling. Uh, I don't see anything else on a on a day to day basis that could be as fulfilling as this. Here you go, baby. I love the stories that allow me to go places and see things that most people in their daily lives would never experience. I think even after 34 years, the coolest thing about what we do is that every day we come to work, we're really not positive what we're going to be doing. All Pentagon employees have been evacuated from the area. When you're in the middle of it and you're just doing the day to day, the day to day, you don't realize exactly what's happening and the impact of these stories you know, nationwide, globally. Um, and it's not until you sit back and look at it when you eventually go home and you watch, wow, that's a, that's a big deal. Sometimes you don't think when you're running, but then when you're getting, then when you finally get a chance to breathe, you go, whoo, whoa, that was, that was something. Really can be. Well, welcome back. Living and working in the nation's capital gives our photographers the rare opportunity to meet some of the most powerful people in the world, from American presidents to polarized world leaders. We begin with photojournalist Jack Frame. Growing up during the Cold War, Jack never thought he'd one day meet the leader of the then Soviet Union. Then, one December day in 1987, Mikhail Gorbachev came to town. My name's Jack Frame. I've been a photographer for... 39 years. Police said, there's a motorcade coming. So Jan said, why don't you jump out? Maybe you'll get a shot of the motorcade going by. You'll get a shot of Gorbachev in the window. You know, very unlikely, but who knows? So I got out. I'm standing in front of my car right at the intersection and with the camera. <clears throat> I look down each street. The motorcade turns to come up H Street and it stops. Gorbachev is out of his car. I'm a block and a half away. The Secret Service and whatever security detail the Russians, the Soviet Union had, are all out in the street. And now you see me, they see me running down the middle of the street towards this crowd with a camera on my shoulder people were trying to stop me from getting close to this crowd. They didn't want me, for some reason, uh, up close to Gorbachev, but as it worked out, I got, I dodged these guys. I felt like a running back, you know, going through a line of scrimmage trying to get to make a touch, you know, score a touchdown. Got to the huge scrum of people, and uh, all of a sudden, this huge guy looked like he was with the Soviet detail. There was one other crew there from CBS, a, a two-man crew, and he put out his arm to this crew and physically, with one arm, two guys just pushed them out of the way, which created this enormous gap for me to run through. And now I am literally two feet away from Mikhail Gorbachev. And uh, I stayed right with him for about seemed like about uh, five minutes. At one point, uh, he stops talking and he glances at me and uh, he grabs my hand and uh, I am filming my own hand being shaken by the president of the Soviet Union. And it was, a, it was an unbelievable experience to uh, to get that sound, to be that close to him, to see the reaction of all the Americans around him, for me to shake his hand. You know, in, at, in the moment, all I was thinking as a news photographer is that I've got this exclusive video. I, I'm the only photographer this close. Uh, people kind of dispersed. 
there was a lot of chaos, him getting back in the car, and off the motorcade went, and I was left with the most incredible video I've ever shot. There's so many stories. Like, people always ask me all the time, what is your mem most memorable story? I covered uh, interviewing President Obama like three or four times. And I interviewed him before he became president. And I remember my grandmother asking me, just tell me, baby, what he smells like. You know, it's so random. It's so insane. So I'm sitting here shooting my story and all I'm thinking, what am I gonna tell Rosina when I get back home of what he smells like? So we got a chance to stand by each other for a minute and he smelled like Irish Spring. Like he smelled like soap. He just smelled really clean, like, like just like fre like fresh like fresh out the shower clean like just really good you know i got to do um, a selfie with george w bush which is uh the first uh first year i got to meet him because i won a first place in a white house news photographers like we got invited in they didn't think that to not tell us to bring cameras so i brought my little point and shoot camera he decided to give us a tour of the white house so he's telling us about the carpet, the walls, the uh, the bluebells, the picture of the bluebells, Texas bluebells. And at that point, I'm like, and there was a law, and I'm just like, you know what? I got to get my picture with him the way I want it. So I just put my arm around him and said, Mr. President, how about a picture? And click. Before he could say anything, he looked up, and the picture was done, and that was it. That's how you do it. Those are some great stories. Well, coming up next, one of our photographers explains what it was like to join American troops on the front lines in Somalia. Then, behind closed doors at one of, the, uh, one of our area's prisons, where inmates are giving back training service dogs to help wounded warriors. Our goal as a photographer is to show people places they don't get to go themselves make interesting pictures um, and, and bring people in on stuff they don't get to normally see. What I think what it takes to make a good story is, the, is to find a character actually in each story and that way people can see how um, whoever we're covering or whatever we're covering they can get a feel for who these people are or what's going on at a certain location or scene or anything that we cover. You know my job is to make people feel like they were there at the scene. In order to tell a good story, we must uh, care. You have to, um, you have to care about what you're doing. Whether you care about the story or not, if you care about telling stories, then you'll be prepared, you'll have what you need, you'll find the main subject, you'll do everything you need to do to tell that story. But it all starts with caring about what you're doing. Our goal as a photographer is to tell stories with pictures, uh, tell people's stories, um, using video and sound to get a viewer's attention. My goal as a photographer is to be the best I can be, be uh, creative in my shots and in post-production and editing. And there are a lot of hard-working guys in this shop and there are a lot of hardworking guys in town. They all work very hard and they all do top quality work. Working in this business can put you on the front lines in the danger zone. One veteran Fox 5 photojournalist learned that firsthand when his world changed with one brief phone call. This is his story. Uh, my name is Don Watrude. Uh, I've been in the business since I was 18. That puts it at about 41 years. About 20 years ago, I came into work and uh, I was out in Loudoun County doing the first snowfall of the season, uh, just kind of running around and I get a call on the cell phone and it's the Simon Desk, Simon Editor at the time and says, uh, how would you like to go to Somalia? I said, okay. When? Tomorrow. Okay. My wife was about 8.9 months pregnant at the time, and my first call was obviously to her, and she said, go. You'll kick yourself 
if you don't. I got a lot of war correspondent urges out of my system on that trip. We literally had to buy our way into the country and out. Thank God the, you know, was not too far at any given time from the American military. Uh, there, were, there were times when we did feel that our lives were threatened and uh, knock on wood, we're back. A Black Hawk helicopter went over, went over my head about 30, 40 feet above me, kind of looked at me and I just gave him a nice friendly wave and I was real glad to see the American military and cued our reporter that we had there. Uh, he's standing on the road and he goes, you're looking live at the, the road to Baidoa and we couldn't have timed it any better. It's like we cued the military. Right when he said that, the first armored personnel carrier came around the corner. Mm, mm, mm. Well, from embedding with American troops on the front lines to going behind the lock and key of local jail cells, some of our photographers have seen it all. Photojournalist Mike Fishoff explains what it was like going inside of a local prison to follow inmates as they trained puppies for wounded warriors. The best service dogs Sit. that end up with disabled people are raised in correctional facilities. The, the prisoners would get puppies and they begin the beginning training for them to become service dogs. So it's constant sit and this and rewarding the puppies. Sit. Let's go. Easy. And then they passed on to a trainer so that they could be prepared to help uh, wounded vets and, and uh, people as a service dog. His name is Spot. Junior. It means a lot. The weight that I can get back to the community. They loved what they were doing and very passionate about it because they wanted to give back to society. You get him so attached to one day you know that he's going to have to leave. You know what I mean? And uh, that's the feeling that I experienced one time before and then I'm going to experience again. Eugene Russell, a uh, photographer, 24, 24 years now. One of the, the, the best stories that I've done here recently would be the wheelchair home. Uh, the guy up in, um, up in Maryland, he had the unfortunate accident just hearing his story of just going to the beach one day out in Ocean City. And he dove into a wave and hit the wave at the wrong angle and, and literally broke his back and he was paralyzed. And so for, for years he, you know, he, he kept trying to keep busy and one of the ways he kept, he kept busy and he loved sports was to be an umpire um, with um, a lot of the sporting leagues around town. Time! And it was just, you know, just a good story of, um, you know, somebody who wasn't gonna let anything that has happened to him keep him down. I've always pretty much been a, a, a glass half full kind of guy. So that's just the way I've always, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm umpiring, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I lead a, a, maybe a more full life than a lot of people that I know. I loved that story. All right, still ahead, many, many women love Sarah Jessica Parker for her fashion, but is she just as relatable as the character she played on Sex and the City? You're about to find out. Plus. It's the greatest of great, it's the American dream. It's kids becoming stars overnight. We take you to Hollywood 2002 when a freshman TV show called American Idol made its debut. Our camera was, was there to meet a little known singer named Kelly Clarkson. Welcome back. Thank goodness the news isn't always serious. Here at Fox 5, we've covered a number of major stories in the world of entertainment, from the early days of American Idol to a recent visit from Sarah Jessica Parker. Our photographers have met some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Hello! Welcome to American Idol! When the show first started, I think they just wanted to drum it up. And so we were sent to L.A. for the first few years. Holly Morris reporting live from Hollywood. We literally worked out of a trailer with maybe two other local crews. And by the time we finished, maybe seven years later, it was, uh, it was 
trudged around in a group and no more access and no more um, what we had at the first beginning where we could just go up and talk to Simon and Paula. Paula and Abdul, who's joining me live right now, hello, hello. to you. you always smile, but in your eyes, Kelly Clarkson, so we literally were just like, hey, how you doing? We're staying in their hotel, yeah. see them in the lobby, where seven years later was so big, it was now you're hoarded around, controlled, now you guys go do this for five minutes, done there, go here. And it became such a, you saw it grow from nothing to the biggest thing on TV. Hello, my name is Paul Lester. I've been a photo uh, for 15 years. It was Sarah Jessica Parker wor working with um, Kevin. And, you know, at this point, I'm cool seeing movie stars and so forth. So I'm just like, hey. Hi. She introduced herself, and the whole time, Kevin is just pacing back and forth. He's just nervous. I'm like, dude, are you nervous? He was like, yeah. I'm like, you know, calm down. And, he had this electric blue suit on. <laughs> she was down to earth, you know. You you always come across people. It doesn't even have to be a movie star, just somebody well known politically or what have you. This seems uppity, all about themselves, and it's all about me. But she was, she was cool. That was a fun shoot too. It was about uh, her shoe line that came out, and ironically, uh, you know, it was a sit down interview. But she had shoes, like off to the side. So I decided to shoot his shoulder and, you know, she was mentioning shoes to Kevin that, you know, describing shoes that stood out to her. And ironically, I was dead on uh, getting the shoes. I didn't even know what she was talking about, but I just kind of followed the action. So that was fun. All right, looks like a good time. Fox 5 photographers, they've been on the front lines of a lot of things from wars to crime scenes, hurricanes and football games. You might think it's all fun, but covering sports can be a rough and tumble assignment. Just ask Chief Photographer Steve Williams. I'm shooting the Redskins playing the Cowboys. And uh, the Cowboys Stadium, when they get inside the 20, you have to kneel down. So you have to shoot from your knees. So I'm shooting from my knees from the end zone. And Cowboys go back. They throw the ball. I'm following the ball in the air. And as soon as it hits a certain point, I say, oh no, this one's on me. And I know it's me. The guy catches the ball and sure enough slides right into me. It just wipes me out. It just wipes me out, it wipes me out, it wipes me out. And so I fall back, make an amazing recovery. It can be rough out there, I'm telling you. All right, when our photographers have a little downtime at the games, they have the chance to chat with the players. Look at this. The Redskins, that's the team I follow, and it's, it's an exciting experience every Sunday during football season. I actually talk to the guys a lot about cars. We don't even talk about football, which is the funniest thing. I have an old car, they have old cars, and a lot of them in the cars, and we would just talk about cars all the time, you know, and that's the funniest thing that these guys that, not these particular guys, but guys that I watch play this game, and then I have access to them, and they're right there, and all we do is talk about cars. Every time we're on a stakeout and it's a really nice day out, everybody walks by going, wow, must be nice to make a living that way. But all the times we're out there and it's 20 degrees, sleeting, and you've been standing out there for hours, nobody walks by, well, they don't even look at you, much less tease you about what, a, what an easy way it is to make a living. But that's part of it. Mm, mm, mm. I want to say thank you to all of our photojournalists who do such a great job every day. And we want to leave you with a few outtakes and funny moments that happened during the production of Beyond the Lens, Stories from the Street. I'm Tony Perkins. Thanks for joining us. I left batteries. Um, I actually left the tripod at a scene and didn't realize it until like three days later. Someone called and we're like, hey, we have a tripod. This, you know, we don't know where it came from. It was in the middle of the sidewalk. What? Like, you have to be yourself. Like, be... This is going to be on TV, no, babe. But, you know, like, like, you got to use... He's just sitting there petting the dog on his lap, you know, just sitting there riding along. And every time I turn, the dog is just staring at me. I'm like, what are you staring at? I hope you're rolling on this. <laughs>